Hey everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. I have a really fun card to share with you today. This is a rainbow unicorn card, and this is using the really sweet magic unicorn stamp set from Flora and Fauna. If you haven't checked out their stamps, you should because the art style is just beautiful. I love them so much. So here's the stamp set that I'm using, and I have a coordinating die for this as well. I just love the style of their stamps. I also have a A2 size folded card. This is top folded. I'm actually going to spin this and do a side folded card. And then I have a piece of just generic card stock for the top layer of my card and that's cut to the same size at five and a half by four and a quarter. And then I have a couple circle templates to create a window in this card. The smaller one will be the window and the larger one will be the background that sits behind the window. So I want that a little larger so it doesn't overlap. And then I have a piece of mixed media card stock to cut out with the larger circle. And then my sentiment will be put on a piece of black paper and I'm going to emboss that with some uh, recollections embossing powder and using Versamark ink which is great for embossing. It's a sticky ink and it will hold that embossing powder down. And then for my Copic coloring I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This is my favorite for using with Copic markers. I have some distress inks as well to create that rainbow. I'm using squeezed lemonade, uh, cracked pistachio, uh, picked raspberry, mermaid lagoon, and wilted violet. I also have this craft palette that I picked up at my local art store and I'm going to use that to create the watercolor effect with those distress inks. And I'm also going to use my water brush here. It's filled with water and it's refillable and so I'm going to use that to create that watercolor background. So let's get started. So to begin, I want to work with my card surfaces first. I want to work with the frame and the base of my card, the under layer. So I'm going to use my two die cuts and cut out the pieces I need. Now the smaller circle that I've chosen is going to go on my top layer to cut a window out for my card. And then I'm going to use this larger size just to create a background piece that I want in mixed media cardstock because that always works nice with the distress inks. So I'm just going to position this. This one doesn't really matter how it's positioned. And then this one on the card top, I want to make sure that it's centered, but I want to make sure I leave room for my sentiment underneath. So I'm just going to kind of look at this and guess the center and then put down the, um, I'm going to rip this in half. I'm out of post-it tape, so I'm trying to stretch this. So I'm just going to put this down and run that through my Sizzix. And then this one doesn't really matter the position as long as it just hits the page here. So I'll run this through off camera and I will be right back. Okay, so I have all the pieces popped out. This is my window and then I have the piece of mixed media cardstock popped out that's going to be a little bit bigger and sit behind the window so it'll catch the overlap of the window. So let's work on this piece first. So I want to do watercolor with this and I'm just going to slide this off my desk. Okay, so I'm just going to use my distress inks and put them down on my palette so that I have a sample of each color to work with to put down onto my card base. And I'll try to get this all in frame so you can see. So now I'm just going to come with my water pen and drip a little bit of water into each one just to get it going and set up. And I also have a piece of paper towel on hand just to blot off my brush as I need to change colors. So I want to do a pattern across, just like a rainbow in stripes, keep them, keeping them pretty even. Um, actually, you know what, I'm going to start with the middle. I think that that might be um, better. And it'll help me center the design better. So I'm starting with green in the middle. So what I did was I went online and I looked up some rainbow images just to figure out the colors of the rainbow and the order that they come in. I didn't want to do something too complex. I think a real rainbow has like seven or eight colors. And so I just picked a handful that I thought would be um, representative of a rainbow and fall in the same order for the card. And so green happened to be my middle color. So I'm just laying that down first, a nice generous strip of green and then building up and down from that. I just want to block out my colors at this point. I want to make sure that I have generally even strips of color across the whole thing. And then I'll come back in after I have these and just start to blur those edges a little bit to be a little bit more like a rainbow, but I want to make sure that I have my color blocking in place first. So now that I have all that color, I'm going to come in and try to blur those edges a little bit more and also lay down 
sort of sporadic drops of color. So I don't want it to be very um, even all the way across. I want some areas of the strip to be darker than others for each color strip and really kind of bring out that watercolor look that is really pretty and, and something you'd more so see with a watercolor design. It helps too if you let it dry um, for one level and then come in and do another layer. After that, it helps to build up the color that way as well. So now I'm just coming back in and blurring any edges that I feel I need to, dropping in any other color to make it a little bit darker and bringing in that watercolor effect. So it all seems to be blending pretty nicely and because the paper's wet, they will blend together as well. So now that I have this background created of the rainbow, I'm just gonna set this aside and let it dry and work on my next piece of coloring my um, little critters. So I have my rainbow unicorn. Um, well, he's not rainbow yet, but he's all stamped out and ready to go on Nina Solar White cardstock. I just had a spare piece on my desk, and so I stamped it out on this. This is a really small item to color. It's got a lot of fine detail in the drawing, but not a lot of space for coloring. So the coloring is very simple. I was bringing in just a collection of Copic colors, pretty much any color and every color under the rainbow, just creating um, a multicolored mane. The mane is drawn in different sections, so just laying down a single color on each color block or each um, block of mane, I guess. And on the tail too, just dropping in a little bit of each color in the tail, not coloring it completely in one color or the other. Um, just uh, dropping color anywhere I could. And then I liked coming in with this um, this blue as well, this light blue, just to create that shadow. And I'll put all of the colors in the description below so you can see. And I just found this as a really elegant and simple way to color the unicorn. It is pretty tiny. And because there is a lot of detail, it's hard to do any real blending or shading. But I did put a lot of colors in this. And so once I was done, I came back with a lot of those same colors that I put in the mane and the tail and just added those as dots on the unicorn's back. So there's a little bit of detail in the drawing there as well. And then I made the hoofs and the horn in gold. And I thought that was a nice finishing touch. So here's a close up. You can see uh, the coloring, just you can see that it's very tiny areas that I colored, but it does give the um, essence of that colorful unicorn. So now I'm ready to pop this out. I'm gonna use those coordinating dies and just get this uh, set up. This is the first time using these dies, so I will have to punch these out. You can use um, jewelry pliers. I also find that if you uh, wiggle the dies back and forth at those joints, they will break and it pops out pretty easily that way too. So here I have the little unicorn die and I'm just gonna put that down with some tape so I can run it through my Sizzix Big Kick machine and pop him out really quickly. And I like to trim the paper before I run it through just so I don't muck up the rest of my paper. Okay, so I'm ready to begin assembling the card now. This is pretty much dry. It's a little bit um, damp, but it should be okay for assembling. Now I want to line this up here on so it sits behind this back window. And so what I'm going to do is just grab some two-way tape and put around the edge um, to hold it in place. So I'm just taking that two-way tape and putting little pieces all around the edge. It is the best way I can get it to um, have the best seal around the edge just by putting a whole bunch of little pieces. It's sort of monotonous, but it works really well. Um, and so just pulling those off and it should be ready and give a good seal too. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that the red is at the top and then I have all of the rainbow in and generally straight. I'm happy with that, so I'm just gonna push it down and put that into place. And now I'm gonna build my card. So I wanna put my sentiment on with foam tape and my little unicorn with foam tape as well. So I have that tape on the back. Now the paper that I'm using is a really thin black paper. If this was a cardstock, I probably wouldn't need so much of the foam tape, but I just wanna make sure that it's well supported. So I have a bunch of pieces on there covering it end to end. 
And then just using my X-Acto knife this way, I can keep my hands out of the way and make sure that everything's positioned correctly or just eyeballing where the center is and lining it up and then uh, slipping up my knife there. Now for the unicorn, I'm gonna put phone tape on too, but he is really little. And so I had to use a lot of little pieces of phone tape, just cutting them up and fitting them into every crack and crevice that I could on the back, anywhere that it would not show through on the front and making sure that the finer areas were supported like his snout or his neck or the mane of his tail. So I'm just pulling those pieces off, lots of little backs, lots of little backs to get. Um, but then coming in the same way with my knife and just easily putting him in center and then twisting the knife, getting it out and pushing him down into place. To finish this off, I have some stars from Recollections. I picked these up at Michael's, so I just want to put some inside the rainbow area just to make it a little more magical for this sweet little unicorn. I don't want any in the white area, so I'm going to pull these out. And then just kind of keep some of these that fell into that uh, colored space. So I'm going to come in with a scrap piece of paper. I have some uh, black left over and I'm just going to use a little bit of my Elmer's craft glue and tack down some of those glitter stars. So the easiest way I find to tack these down is just to put a little bit of glue on the end of my knife and then pick up the star with the end of my knife that has the glue on it and then flip it over, use my hand or my finger to hold it in place. Just slide the knife out and give a little press into the paper for each of the stars. And I find this works the best and they stay pretty well put with that craft glue. That craft glue is really strong as well. And I thought this was a nice whimsical touch to the card. So now just as a finishing touch, I'm gonna to come in with my Wink of Stella brush pen and clear glitter. I love this pen. It always just gives a nice finishing touch to the card. So I wanna put this all over my unicorn. And then I'm also gonna add a bit of it in the background. I just want to make sure I brush all of the unicorn and then maybe a little bit into where the stars are kind of falling and just dancing it around. Being very careful not to reactivate that distress ink because because this is a liquid it will reactivate. So I just want to be very light and then I'm going to put it in my sentiment as well. So a brush over and around the letters in the sentiment piece. So, so pretty. So you can see a bit of the glitter in the light. So it's nice and unicorn magical. Now I'm gonna put it on my card. Now I'm gonna put the tape on the base of my card. I like to do that. And so I like to rim the outer edge of the base and then just put an X down the middle of the with the tape. And I find this holds really well. I've never had a card come off. Um, but I find that this gives a nice secure hold. So I'm gonna line this up with the edges of my hands on the folded edge on my desk. I find this is just the easiest way, making sure it comes together on the ends, looks pretty good. And then I'll just push it into place. And there you have it. There is my Flora and Fauna Magical Unicorn card. I love how this turned out. I love all the glitter and just the rainbow colors, it's really fun. I like the um, contrast of the black and the white. I'm a big fan of that look. So this is my finished card. I think it turned out pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos and hit the bell as well so you get notified as they go live. Thank you so much for watching.